There's lots going on. Uh, and Jeff, how do you see the energy curve trajectory in mobile networks? Uh, great question. And uh, I think that we really need to set a little context. So we have um, the telecommunications industry going through a shift from 4G over to 5G technology. And as we start to research this shift, we find that by about 2026, we should see total energy consumption go up by 150 to 170 percent. When we look at what the analysts in the industry are saying compared to our own research, we're finding uh, companies like Veritiv and 451 Research agreeing with these numbers. So we feel like they're pretty consistent. And I know that there's a lot of thought out there about you know, 5G networks and how they're gonna be so much faster and so much more efficient. And while that is true, they're efficient in things like uh, bits per bandwidth or the improvement in overall latency. But 5G networks bring with them some requirements in order to uh, attain those efficiencies. One is you have to increase the density of the network. So more places where the network is exposed. Um, additionally, 5G networks are heavily reliant on IT-based systems, common off-the-shelf systems, if you will, versus having uh, proprietary appliances that are placed out there. Also, 5G networks really uh, increase um, utilization of the network and those that are hopping on the network that want to use it. And, and that in itself really is accelerating um, the amount of traffic growth. You know, we saw traffic really grow during the pandemic period, and I expect that we'll see it even hockey stick higher um, as 5G becomes more available across the globe. So, you know, that begs the question on that context of, you know, the network spreading out, becoming more dense, um, much more use on it. What do we do? What do we do to um, meet our sustainability goals in regards to 5G? And how do we help the service providers um, make this technology affordable, deployable, and help them meet their ESG goals? I think. Um, the very first thing that we can do and we will do is take a data first approach to the network and we will push intelligence down to the edges of the network as the 5G network gets deployed. This will allow us to put um, intelligence out there at those edges and only transport uh, data and communications back to the core that it's necessary for that to occur. Things like a, a lot of IoT use cases or the fancier use cases like uh, virtual reality or augmented reality or uh, gaming that people are really talking about, that will transact at the edge and very little of that data will get hauled back into the core. And so that's one thing that we can do to really uh, improve the efficiency of the network. Another thing that we need to do is we need to leverage modern software building techniques and technologies. So what do I mean by that? Um, we need to make sure that we're not just trying to take software that we built yesterday and essentially cloud wash it and transport it into the cloud. Rather, what we need to do is build our software from the ground up with a clean sheet approach for cloud native services that deploy um, as microservices, only the microservices that are needed in order to provide a service for a customer are engaged and used at any one time. And, and then they go away when they're not necessary anymore. Another thing that we need to focus our efforts on are efficient programming language. So languages such as C, C++, Rust, um, we can use all of those languages in a framework 
called the 12 Factor App, which defines the way that you should build a cloud native application. And those programming languages have proved that they run more efficiently and put less of a burden on the infrastructure and thereby the infrastructure requires less energy to do the same amount of work. Then I think the final thing that we really need to focus in on on the mobile networks and telecommunications as a whole, and HPE and Intel are locked arm in arm in this, and that's continued innovation in the compute infrastructure um, so that we can generate those power efficiencies so that we can take down um, what it takes to actually run this um, infrastructure, these platforms, and reduce that total energy consumption that we see uh, increasing as these new and modern networks start to get deployed. Great points. And, and Jenny, same question for you. How do you see the energy curve trajectory in mobile networks? Yeah, you know, Jeff talked about a lot of really great innovation that's happening in order to improve overall energy efficiency and sustainability in the network. And, you know, very often we think about um, the energy consumption coming from data centers, large data centers around the, the globe. Uh, but in reality, global networks actually consume one and a half times more power um, than global data centers. And so it's really imperative that, that we focus on, you know, as, as 5G explodes, as use cases around IoT, private networks, so many um, innovations that are happening, um, certainly at the edge and, and across the network end to end, we need to ensure that we're focused on improving energy efficiency and sustainability while data flowing through the networks worldwide continue to multiply, in some cases exponentially. And really, our imperative collectively needs to be to drive sustainability into every byte of data by embedding energy efficiency in the network layers, in the hardware, in the software, as Jeff was talking about before, and also decarbonize the energy that we are consuming. Um, and so this really means that the ecosystem needs to come together to develop and to deploy solutions that deliver on sustainable outcomes. And uh, we have we have a couple of great examples uh, already in place that are that are showcasing um, great results. Um, if we look at a, a collaboration between Intel and HPE that we demoed at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona earlier this year, we had an opportunity to um, show dynamic AI based power management for 5G core networks. Um, and we were able to see significant improvements over, you know, looking at, at um, real world traffic patterns, being able to improve power up to 30%. Um, software ecosystem partners are taking these learnings and now iterating on this demonstration of what's possible and, um, and deploying solutions that are based on this technology. Um, if we look at some of those edge use cases that, that Jeff talked about, um, in the extreme far edge, there's a lot of innovation that's necessary there as well. And another area uh, where we've collaborated with HPE is with Isotope and their cool extreme micro data center solution. Um, in order to improve overall cooling solutions um, and, and a lot of really interesting um, innovation happening there with, with thermal management technologies. And so, you know, when you look at, at some of these early proof points, it really has an opportunity to create kind of motivation and, and role modeling um, with the telcos and the overall networking ecosystem in order to show what's possible in becoming more sustainable. Um, sometimes this motivation also comes in the form of uh, regulatory change. Um, so for is just one example, France recently passed a law in the, in the last couple of years aiming to reduce um, overall carbon footprint of the ICT industry in France. Um, and so what this means is that um, that the telecom operators in France, like Orange, SFR, Free, um, and others, will have to publish key indicators on policies for reducing their overall environmental footprint. And we certainly see in other countries and other jurisdictions as well, worldwide tel telco operators um, accelerating their own commitments to achieving uh, net zero goals. Um, so, you know, realistically, when you look at the complexity of the ecosystem and the value chain that we are all part of in the telecom industry, no one partner can resolve this massive global challenge on our own. The entire value chain needs to play a part, um, whether it's addressing aspects of embodied carbon or operational carbon, um, circulation 
capillarity reuse of equipment um, to make sure that we build a more sustainable network for the future. And of course, the services and the use cases that our technology will make possible um, in the network and edge and the infrastructure of the future will impact sustainability in many different ways. Jeff talked a great deal about the intelligence that's being embedded end to end across the network. Um, this has the power to improve overall energy efficiency and, and footprint as well. So, you know, as we look across our, our supply chain, as well as being part of our own customer supply chain um, and that overall value chain end to end, uh, we're really focused on prioritizing addressing these issues.